Good morning and welcome to Rose Red Homestead. Today's video is at the request of Jim. He has been noticing some themes coming through on the comments and I have noticed those as well, but he suggested that we do a video where we talk about the pros and cons of the different canner types. And um, some folks are especially concerned about how much you have to watch over your canner when it's going. And can't we just find a sweet spot for the heat and walk away and leave it? And so we're going to um, actually demonstrate, Jim is the one that watches over the canner out on outside in, in our outdoor canning area. I'm the one that watches the canners here in the house. And so we're going to track Jim uh, to, so that you can see exactly what he does with our big Presto 23 quart today. Now, in order to do what Jim wanted, we had to can something. And one of the things that we have never canned before is vegetable soup, just plain vegetable soup. And so that's what we're going to do today, and I'm actually kind of excited about it. Now, this is not a can your own soup recipe the way we have done many times before. This is an actual tested recipe from the Ball Blue Book, but this Ball Blue Book is from 1995. And so we have some double checking that we have to do because this is an older Ball Blue Book. Now the recipes in this Ball Blue Book were all tested for safety at the time this was published. So yes, these are tested recipes, but in the ensuing years, there have been some things that have changed. And so if we want to use a recipe, and I won't go back as far as 1972, the way some people have, <laughs> in my family have done, but I sometimes use the 1995 recipes, but I double check against today's processes and knowledge to be sure that it is okay. Now, um, what I did with this soup, it has all of these vegetable ingredients in exact amounts, and I followed the recipe exactly. But I also went back to the USDA Can it Your Own Soup, and I will put that link below in the video, to be sure that all of these ingredients are safe and okay by the USDA, which they are. And I also wanted to be sure that the process was updated, or at least in parallel with updated processes, and it is. And I wanted to double check the processing times that are stated here. Um, in this book, it says to process this vegetable soup for 60 minutes, only 60 minutes and not 75, for pints, and then the 75 is for quarts. And so when I checked with the, with the USDA, can your own soup, that is exactly what their latest recommendations are for canning soup. Now, uh, one of the things that is different is that the USDA really doesn't, there's not a lot of soup, tested soup recipes out there. Rather, it is, here is what you can do to can your own soup and you follow these basic ideas. And so just to be extra cautious, even though I feel very confident using this tested recipe because it is a match with what the USDA does today, I am going to insert my gadget into one of the jars and we are going to double check to be sure that this soup gets up into the kill zone for long enough and I'll run my data analysis on it and we'll uh, check that out at the end of this video. So we're going to do several things today. We're going to talk about pros and cons of the types of canners. Uh, we're going to watch Jim. We're going to shadow Jim so that you can see how many times he goes out to check our canner. And ours is a few more steps out than yours may be if you are canning right in your kitchen to double check. But that is okay. It is better to be safe. So, and then we're going to double check the safety by using my gadget. And for those of you that don't know what my gadget is, this fits down inside a canning jar and then it is processed just like the food in that jar. And it's a little computer on the inside here and it gives me the temperature from this probe inside the food so I know the temperature inside the jars every minute. And then when the uh, process is over, and the jar is removed from the canner, I open it up immediately and retrieve this and, and download my data on my computer and then I run it through my algorithm so that I know that it has been in the kill zone for long enough and that's what my algorithm tells me. Now, uh, some of you have commented that you're not seeing the Presto Digital among my canners anymore and you are correct. 
One of the things that I found out after, it's been about a year since I did most of that uh, testing of canners, and in subsequent canning, I learned about myself that I would go to the Instant Pot Max or the Nesco, and I would avoid the Presto for whatever reason. There was no particular reason. I just liked the other ones a little bit better, and I don't need three canners like that. I don't need three electric canners. And so we ended up giving that Presto canner to someone who really needed it a whole lot more than we do. So today's testing is going to be on the Nesco and the Instant Pot Max, as well as the stove top Presto, our 23 quart um, that Jim monitors outside. So we're gonna talk about pros and cons as we go. First of all, right now, we're gonna get going on this soup. And so this is what I have going. Now, because I'm going to be doing the equivalent of 13 quarts, because I'm gonna fill all three canners, including the Instant Pot Max with four pints, it will not take quarts. So four quarts in the Nesco, seven quarts in the Presto stovetop, and then we're good to go. I doubled the recipe. Everything that you see me do in this pot is already done in this pot here. So I'm doubling the recipe. That is not yet cooked. So here we go. I'm gonna tell you what the ingredients are. Um, first of all, we will put in each of these bowls has two ingredients. This is onions. This is two cups of onions and four cups of lima beans. We bought um, frozen lima beans and thawed them. These are no longer frozen, they are very thawed. The same thing here with the corn. This is a quart of corn. It was frozen and it was and two cups of celery. And remember this is an exact following the recipe for this vegetable soup exactly. Now this is six cups of diced potatoes and six cups of chopped carrots and a quart and a half of water measured out. And now it calls for two quarts of tomatoes. And tomatoes are quite expensive in the stores right now, so I'm opting to use two quarts of canned tomatoes. Here's 28 ounces of tomatoes and 28 ounces of tomatoes. And a little bit of extra to make sure that it comes up to two full quarts of tomatoes. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on. And what we have to do here is this now has to come to a boil and this matches the USDA instructions as well. And this needs to boil for five minutes. And then we can put it into the jars. Now this is according to the tested recipe. And the USDA says that we follow the instructions for hot pack canning of vegetables. And that is what these vegetables say to do. Now I'm going to also, in addition, add some salt and pepper. The recipe says we can do that. So I'm putting in a couple of tablespoons of salt. That'll be just a little bit less than one teaspoon per quart. And then a couple of teaspoons of pepper. All right, so I'm gonna turn the other burner on in the back as well, and we will come back after this has boiled for five minutes and get it in the jars and start our canning process. So we're just about ready to fill the jars to, that go in this canner and wanna give you a quick look. That's three quarts of water in the bottom, and um, so it comes up about to my first knuckle. And Jim is gonna talk you through what he does to get it started. We want it up to a simmer by the time we bring the jars out. Okay, one of the things we're gonna use, we're gonna to have to turn the tank on. And the tank turning on is counterclockwise. What we need to do is go ahead and turn the burner on. It's at an off point right now. We can turn it to warm and we've got flame. With that, we're going to turn it up to high to get it as quickly possible as possible to a simmer point 
it'll be boiling, but we'll turn it down again when we get to the point where we're going, going to go ahead and put them in. These are hot, hot jars. All right, I'll meet you out at the canner. So Jim is turning down the heat. The water got too hot. So we're gonna turn it way, way low. It should be just simmering. Now these jars are super hot. One of the things that we have to do is make sure that when we turn down the, uh, the cooker, what we have to do is make sure it's going to go only so low. But the other thing we need to do is take into consideration when we put those in, what's gonna happen is that that may be so low that the wind may blow it out. So we have to adjust and readjust and readjust. I come out every five to 10 minutes before things are finally stabilized just to make sure it's going. It could end up running out of gas, which causes a problem. It could be the wind. It could be that it's too low. So again, that idea of adjusting and readjusting and readjusting becomes a major issue. So the water has calmed down quite a bit and it's just about right for putting the jars in. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, this is what the seven look like. We're going to go ahead and put the lid on the top. And what we're looking for is the head of steam that comes out. We've got to turn it up a little bit. Do you want to turn it up? Do you want me to turn it up? Or you can turn it up. Where do you usually put it? I normally put it at medium. Okay, so now it is on medium. Yeah. So we should get that steam here pretty quick. Yes, pretty quick. Okay, sounds good. Now the others are ready to get into the jars. We've got the outside canner going. It's now time to get these two started. They are both loaded. The soup is boiling hot. Here is my gadget. I'm gonna put it down in the very middle of this jar. And then here's a little trick that I use to keep it centered. The soup is still hot, hot, hot. I'm gonna get some solids down there to hold that in place. No need to mark this jar because the other three are wide mouth. This is the only regular mouth that's going to go in. Okay, so let's get the Nesco started. These are quartz. And that came back out just a few moments ago and we're just about at a hair above 14. I will continue to come out every uh, 10 minutes or so and check and see where it is. If it goes above 15, I turn it down. If it falls down to 13, it's real problematic because it may go down below that. We have to start over again. So between that uh, 13 and 15 number. But it's very, very minute as far as the um, changing of the amount of gas for it. So don't turn it all the way up or turn it all the way down. And you'll lose uh, too much of the steam or the heat or you go over and cause problems and you've got your rattling of the, uh, the weight. Um, it is a little bit tricky to keep the pressure going. Like Jim has been telling you, he has to come out several times. Um, but now that it is regulated and we are within the first 10 minutes of the canning countdown, and so for the first 10 minutes, it's a little tricky, but once he gets it stabilized, then he comes out about every 10 or 15 minutes to check. Okay, because right now it looks like it's at about, almost about 14 and a quarter. We have four pints in the max, they're hot. Um, I filled it with water halfway up the jars, which is what the instructions require, and we are ready to start. Now, for, for the max, there is nothing more to do. It will do everything on its own. I love this one because it has an external temperature readout, and um, that way I can monitor that it gets up to 240 degrees Fahrenheit, which is into the kill zone. So this one is now set to go and it will finish on its own, but I walk by all the time and check both of these canners. So there are a lot of pros to these electric canners. If the, if the dinner went off just a few moments ago, that's your 75 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and turn the dial off completely so it can um, cool down naturally. And I also have to go ahead and turn our propane off. 
and we're done. We'll just let it go ahead and go all the way back down to zero. And then we get to the point of where we open it. All three canners are finished. This is the first one to cool down naturally. It finished first because it's colder out here. The others will take a little bit more time in the house. So we're going to go ahead and open this up now. Checking to be sure. No more pressure. And there we have it, beautiful vegetable soup. Okay, so we have now seven quarts of this beautiful soup. They will be okay out here for a couple of hours and then we'll bring them in the house before it gets too cold. And we will summarize the pros and cons of all three canners when all three are finished and all of the jars are inside in just a little bit. So we are done with all of the canning, here they are. These seven are the ones that we did in the outdoor Presto 23 quart canner. These four came from the um, Instant Pot Max, and these four I just took out of the Nesco. This is the one that has my gadget in it, where I'm going to pull that in just a minute. So just to review the pros and cons of each canner. The other two are electric canners, and um, technically I will not recommend them, even though um, I have tested them for safety, and at our elevation they are totally and completely safe, but that is not something that I am going to impose on anyone else. Everyone will need to make their own decision on that. My data have shown over and over and over again that these two canners and the Presto Digital as well have been safe in multiple um, trials. So there are pros and cons to every single one. And um, with this recipe, we need to now double check to be sure that even though we took an old recipe and compared it against the current version of what the USDA recommends, is this a safe recipe? So we're going to pull the data logger out of this court right here. I am going to go retrieve the data and I'll be back with the results in just a few minutes. Well, I have um, the data, and it's good news. We are fine. The soup is very safe. I don't have my usual graphs and charts to show you because the, um, my university has already cut me out of the uh, Microsoft suite that I need. I needed Excel, and I no longer have access to it, so I had to do some hand calculations. But all is well. The soup is good, and it's way into the safety zone, so we are good to go. So I hope that this was helpful to you. And just to review, we um, in this video, we have covered several things. First of all, we covered how to take a recipe from an older ball blue book, compare it with what is current with USDA, and then follow a tested recipe because everything was okay. And we double tested that using uh, my data logger. Then the next thing we did was that we canned vegetable soup, which we have never done before on our channel. So that's a good thing as well. And then we also talked about the difference, the pros and cons of the three canners that we have, one stovetop and two electric canners. So I hope that this information has been useful to you, and we will see you at our next video. What we have to do is go ahead and turn the burner on to high right here and over here.
Let's do that again. <laughs> okay.